So this game was released on two different systems and each version of the game is clearly different in some way but I've only played the second version of this game, the newer version of this game and my brother actually did get the original version of this game way back in the day and I really don't know much about that particular version to really say how similar the different versions are but I can say with some confidence that because of the technology that both of these versions are at least a bit different. So you can sort of take this as me talking about both entries if you want to, but just know that I've only played the second variation of this game. And this is a game that was met with rather a lot of hate. And this is one of those strange games that was, depending on how you look at it, was never originally released in Europe. In fact, I remember going to New York in 2009 and seeing this game on the shelf and I even if I bought it it was an NTSC game so I couldn't play it but yeah we never actually got this variation of the game until later down the line and just to be clear I am talking about Kingdom Hearts re Chain of Memories so yeah my brother had the Game Boy Advance version and I didn't really know anything about it all I knew was that it involved cards and in terms of Kingdom Hearts people very often say that this is the worst although I also hear that about 358 over two days but generally speaking I hear people say that this is the worst Kingdom Hearts game now I didn't get to the end of this game but I thought it was really nice I thought it was really interesting with the mechanics so just in case you're unfamiliar allow me to explain this game uses a card battle system even though it is clearly a run around press buttons to attack in real time kind of deal but you collect cards and you have to form a deck out of the cards that you collect although not all of the cards fit into a deck there are other cards that you use outside of battles but you have a certain amount of points that you can dedicate to building up your deck and basically you want your deck to be as big as possible in this game it's not like a trading card game where a smaller deck means you have more control you just want as many cards as you can get in but each card will have a certain amount of value as to how much space it takes up in your deck so there's that level of variation there and each card will have its own ability which sometimes is just like a basic attack and it will also have its own level and the idea is that if you use a card with a certain level the opponent has to use a card of a greater level in order to block that attack but you also get different cards for like healing and all that and once you've exhausted all of the cards in your deck you have to refresh them and the more times you have to refresh them to bring them back the longer it will take to refresh them each time and it has an element of resource management that I think is really nice and I really enjoyed this and there is quite a lot of variation in the types of cards you can get because you'll have cards that will allow you to affect your deck in other alternate ways each with their own cost and their own level and so on and so forth but you also get these different types of cards which are for traveling between rooms each level is based on a sort of grid and you travel in between rooms and in each room there is a few enemies and you can walk up to the enemies to initiate in a fight with them and doing so will put you into this arena and you have to fight them inside this arena but you can also get cards that affect what you will encounter in the room so you can get cards that will affect the enemies in the room before you enter the room so you might use a card which will allow you to have the enemies asleep automatically or you might have cards that will allow you to access different shops and even with the shops, there's an element of strategy there as to what types of packs of cards you want to buy. And so people always criticize this game for being, and I hate this word, but limiting. That's not my words, that's their words, limiting. But I really did like this element of like strategy that they used. You also have the whole thing of choosing what to gain when you level up. So it might be your health that you choose to level up or your capacity for your deck or different abilities to use called slates. And this reminds me a lot of the Paper Mario leveling up system where you can choose health, flower point or badge points when you level up. But yeah, I think that especially in terms of Kingdom Hearts, this game is so undeservedly hated.
Here's a game that certainly surprised me, and I did not go into this game thinking that I would like it as much as I do. In fact, this game fell under the category of, well, I got this free on PS Plus, let's try it out, it might be okay. And as it did turn out, I played it, and actually really liked it. And this is actually a rather popular game as well, popular to the extent that they showed this at E3. And so, I was very pleasantly surprised. This game is mostly known for the villain more than anything else because the villain is this particular character that really stands out and it really was their center piece that they used to push the game. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Yeah, let's just cut to the chase. I'm talking about Far Cry 3. I honestly did not think I would be into this game as much as I was. In fact, I remember starting the game and throughout the tutorial at the beginning of the game thinking, yep, this is very typical first person shooter type thing. You're walking slowly, introducing mechanics like throwing a rock to distract someone and sneaking around and doing a sneak attack with a knife or whatever from behind. All that sort of stuff. But the basic core idea of this game is that you get captured and all of your friends get captured on this island by Vars, who is the villain and their gang, who basically want to hold you hostage. But the core concept of the game is to travel around the island and find the different enemy posts and if you can take over them then you will access that as a fast travel point. So that is sort of how you expand your traveling capabilities. And in order to take over a base, the way that that works is that you generally have to try and like scan the area, use your camera to mark enemies and you can walk around and you, generally speaking, want to be sneaky. If you can sneak around and kill them off, stab them in the back or use a bow and arrow which is silent and then if you can like hide the bodies, that really just help you. And if you can dismantle the alarm so that they can not call for reinforcements that also helps you out as well. And you'll get more experience from doing this depending on how well you do that. The leveling system itself has three separate skill trees. I mean, it's not really that interesting, really. But you'll get experience. Once you've got enough experience, you'll level up and you'll get a point to spend on these skill trees. And there's different skill trees that have different associations, different animals. It's just there for the sake of flavoring, I suppose. And there is also on top of that this element of of hunting. So you'll have all these different wildlife animals scattered around in different parts of the island and if you kill them and you take their hides then you can use that to craft certain items such as an upgraded wallet to allow you to hold more money or upgraded weapon holsters so you have more easy access to your weapons or a bigger bag so you can hold more loot. A lot of the loot is just stupid stuff that you just sell. The story itself, progression through the story, is different to the whole thing about going around and taking over the different bases. That's just like a side quest, so to speak, but it's one that's ingrained into the story because it's one that really helps you progress and helps you get around different places. And of course it does the Ubisoft thing of having radio towers that you have to climb in order to unlock sections of the map which I'm perfectly fine with I don't see that as a problem but what I do really like about this game is that once you've completed the first island you then move on to the second island and moving on to the second island you are presented with a new scenario because the enemies that you now have to fight are more well armed they are a different category of enemy and they are better protected but also you are given a disguise so that you can walk amongst them and not be found unless you start attacking them. And you also get a wingsuit which will allow you to glide through the air. So there is a distinctive difference between the first half and the second half. And I really do like that. I think the problem with a lot of like big open world games is that they don't have any distinctive features. And you don't have any of those big wow moments that will allow you to contemplate how the different mechanics works in different ways. When you interact with new things and when you get new things. But yeah, Far Cry 3 is a game I was very pleasantly surprised with. Oh yes, there's one thing that I forgot to mention. Actually, two things I forgot to mention. First of all, I wanted to tell a story about one of the moments in this game. There is a part of the story where you have to burn down fields of marijuana. And whilst you're doing that, there is this really 
horrible music that is playing. And the first time I actually got to this point in the game, what happened was I thought that it was the car radio that I was driving, but the game had glitched and it didn't stop the music once I got out of the car. And so it just kept playing as I was playing through this section of the game. And so I ended up quitting and reloading because I thought... I don't want to listen to that music whilst I'm doing this. I don't like how it's glitched like that. And then it started playing again. And I was thinking, oh, this isn't a glitch. This was a design choice. They chose to have the music at this bit. And the other thing that I want to mention is that the multiplayer is awful, as I would have expected it to be, because it's multiplayer in a first-person shooter. It's just not interesting. It's just like, see, what makes this game good and what I like about it in terms of just being an FPS is it isn't just one of those standard FPSs where it's all about just shooting the guys. There's a more of a long-term feel to it, and there's more of a methodology and thinking process behind it all but you go into multiplayer and it's just walk forward kill a load of guys pick up the healing items and ammo and it's just so boring When I got my PS4, I actually got the bundle that came with Black Ops 3, and I had no interest in Black Ops 3. So I instantly went to CEX and traded it in and got £40 store credit for it. And I did accumulate quite a bit of store credit with that store, but there was one game I was looking to get, and I could have got the PS4 version because it was out on PS4, but it was cheaper on PS3, so I figured, why not just get it on PS3? And so I did, and it had been out for enough time that I had felt it was cheap enough to buy, so I did. Now, the reason that I wanted this game in particular is because I knew of the game that came previous to it and so I figured this game would basically be more of the same and I'm kind of happy to have got it because it was basically more of the same and this game is Far Cry 4. Now I realised that the previous entry in this list was Far Cry 3 and what I would have done in the past is I would have lumped them together, I would have made a clump but now that we're in the top 100 I don't want to do that so what I've decided that I'm going to do is that instead of clumping them together into one segment where I talk about both games. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to split them up and kind of split my descriptions of them. So for example, I may have missed out on things on Far Cry 3 that I can leave to mention with Far Cry 4 and just say that yeah, it applies to both of them. But there are many things that I talked about with Far Cry 3 that do apply to Far Cry 4. So I'm kind of fearing that I may not have too much to say about this game in particular, but I think I am one of the few people who are actually prefers Far Cry 4 to Far Cry 3, even though, really speaking, they are extremely similar games, which is fine, because that is the type of experience I was looking for when I got Far Cry 4, but the story behind it is different. It's no longer tropical, it's in the Himalayas, so you have Kirat, you have South Kirat and North Kirat, and this also works similar to how the islands work in Far Cry 3, where this time they are divided into the South and the North, where the South is your starting area where you have to complete the first part of the story and then once you've done that you are then able to progress into the north half and do all of the stuff in the northern segment of the game which I do like that however in this particular instance there isn't such a big difference between the south and the north it's not like you are given some great abilities or anything really changes up in that regard it's just access to a brand new area where all of the things are still there and you've still got all your typical collection like you've got all of your masks to find and you've got the prayer wheels to use just really silly collectible stuff that has no depth to it but if that's the type of experience that you're after where you can just sit back and relax and get on with it that's what this game provides but this game does also provide what you had with Far Cry 3 with the different bases and the different tactics that go into taking over the bases although I noticed that this time some of the bases towards the end of the game tend to be a little bit more elaborate which I liked and this game also had these large bases as well. This game did 
add something which I think is pretty stupid and they added it because this is one of the cool things that games do nowadays I guess and that is a sort of a morality system thing but basically there are two characters who are both on your side basically and they argue a lot about how to go about doing things so one of these characters is all about the legacy of their people and the other character is all about moving forward and so you you have to pick a side and you have to choose who you're going to agree with and whose missions you're going to undertake and it really is stupid and it's irrelevant and it doesn't matter and it's just there so that people can say oh this game has meaningful choices when the meaningful choices are more to do with how you approach completing the game in a more strategic fashion but you know that's what people do that's how people act that's how people think this game did add more variety with the enemy types as well for example you have the hunters who I hate them but I do like the fact that they added this added element of variety of the enemies so with the hunters for example when you target them when you track them their tracked status will expire unlike the other enemies where you track them and then you just know where they are from that point on but I generally feel that this game was more balanced I feel that the menu design was massively improved because the menu in Far Cry 3 was just full of empty space that could have been utilized but just wasn't and the multiplayer is still terrible I played a bit of multiplayer because I needed to for the platinum. The competitive multiplayer, I didn't care about winning, I just had to play it. Run forward a bit, die. Run forward a bit more. Maybe grab a thing on a base, then have the base taken, then die. I just don't like competitive first person shooting. I just don't. And the leveling system as well, this time didn't require story progress in order to reach certain abilities. At least I don't think so, but the ability did require you to meet certain requirements, so maybe there are some story based ones but it seemed to be a lot clearer and I think it did enough that I ended up liking this game just that little bit more than I did with Far Cry 3 so yep two very similar games but this is just the one that I think of the two was that little bit better than the other